I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today you're going to learn the answer to Can You Troubleshoot number five. Can You Troubleshoot is a series of videos I do where I present you with a video uh, and other evidence of a quadcopter that's having some kind of a problem, and I ask you to troubleshoot what's going wrong with it. If you haven't watched the presentation of the problem for Can You Troubleshoot number five, well, you should go watch that first and see what your guess is before you now watch me go through what the answer is. And by the way, I do have a whole playlist of Can You Troubleshoot videos, one, two, three, four, yes, and five, if you want to go back and try your hand at some of the older ones. The answer to the previous one was, and by the way, many of you got this more than I thought. Uh, the answer was that P gain was way too low. Uh, and for those of you who actually got it by watching the copter fly and watching the sticks, uh, and without actually looking at the PID screen that I showed you at the end, super duper bonus points for you. The real ultra super duper bonus points go to the people who guessed the reason why I made this mistake. The answer is that I was going from one version of Betaflight to another and Betaflight changed. I don't remember the exact version where this happened. Betaflight changed the way it scales the PIDs. Originally, Clean Flight represented the PIDs as 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up through 25, 1 through 25. Internally, the P gain is actually a number from 1 to 255, and it was just divided by 10. Why'd they do that? I don't know. Well, at some point, Betaflight said, yeah, why did they do that? Forget that. And it changed the PIDs so that the P gain was from 1 to 255. And I had I had just was so used to inputting 11 as my P gain, or 12 or 10 or whatever, that when I went to input the P gains on this new build, I, st I put in 11 instead when I meant to put 110, and I ran into this problem. The dead giveaway for me that this problem was some kind of a configuration issue and not a, like a mechanical issue, like a, a broken motor or a slipping prop or a miscalibrated ESC. The dead giveaway was that the, the problem only happened on the yaw axis. The pitch and the roll axis responded fine, but I would just have really spotty, inconsistent yaw authority. I would input some yaw, nothing would happen. I'd input some more yaw, and then it would kind of go crazy to the left, but then I would center the stick and it would keep going to the left. It was just kind of all over the place. The fact that it was only happening on that single axis, there's anything mechanical is seldom going to affect just one axis. In order to affect only the pitch axis, you would need the two front motors or the two back motors to be having the same problem. And the chances of something going wrong on two motors at the same time in the exact same way. Well, it's not impossible, but it's not likely. I thought it would be cool if we took a look at the black box from this flight so you could see what was going on on the inside. Uh, I've got black box set up here with RC command yaw, which is what my stick is telling the copter to do. The yaw gyro, which is what the copter is actually doing and the PID term, P, just the P term on yaw, which is what the PID controller is doing to try and influence the gyro to do what RC command is telling it to do. So RC command, what the copter ought to be doing, gyro, what it is doing, and the P term is trying to make those two be the same thing, make it do what it's being told to do. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna slide forward and I'm gonna watch RC command, which is the red line, and I'm gonna look for a time when RC command becomes non-zero, and that'll mean I deflected the stick one way or the other. You'll notice that while the stick is centered, the gyro is, it's not perfectly flat because this is a real world system and there's vibration and all this stuff, but it's generally staying centered and the P term is generally staying centered. So everything is as it should be. If we look at this situation here, we can see that the gyro goes positive, and positive gyro is left yaw. I'll show you in a minute how I know that. I don't memorize it. <laughs> po positive gyro is left yaw, and we can see that the stick RC command is zero. The stick is centered, and, and therefore the P term goes negative to counteract the uncommanded gyro motion. The gyro goes positive, but the stick is centered which means the gyro should be zero as well. And so the P term goes negative to counteract the uncommanded motion that's occurring in the gyro. And we see that same thing happening here. The gyro has now gone negative. The copter is yawing very, very slightly to the right. The P term goes positive again, trying to counteract the uncommanded motion. It's uncommanded because RC command is zero. The stick is centered. If we continue to go forward, we can see here, I start to input some left yaw, just a little bit of left yaw. And here I input a little bit more. And we can see that the gyro, it climbs slowly. The copter is yawing to the left, and it's yawing to the left faster and faster, but not very fast, not as fast as I expected. And I'm very confused here. 
If we watch this play forward in slow-mo, you can see, hang on. Why was there this sudden right roll or left roll? And the answer to that is that I'm trying to turn to the left uh, and I started to input a coordinated turn, which would involve yaw and roll. And when the copter didn't yaw, the copter rolled into, uh, there was just roll, so it didn't look like a coordinated turn. Also, I think I input an extra bit of, of left roll because I'm trying to turn to the left. See here, I've got just a bit, just a bit of left yaw and left roll here, trying to do a coordinated turn. And when the copter didn't do anything and just kept flying straight, I was like, I need to get away from that tree. And so I jammed in some left roll to try and just get the copter moving to the left, even if it wasn't a very coordinated turn. As we continue to watch here, we can see me trying to put in left roll, but the gyro and the p-term are just not responding. Here's a big push to the left with the stick, big push to the left right here. And you can see the p-term goes positive. Now, take a look here. Here I have input and commanded a left yaw, okay? The p-term rises to push to the left. So the, the RC command is pushing to the left because positive uh, RC command, positive yaw is left yaw. The, j the P term rises and also pushes to the left. And the gyro shows that we are moving to the left, but not very fast, are we? Not very fast. It's just not a lot of motion here. And we can see this continue to play out. Here, as I input left yaw, we can see the gyro slowly climbing, uh, climbing, go faster, go faster. The p-term is just anemic. It's always got no magnitude whatsoever. And here, in fact, it's just, it's just, it's terrible. <laughs> so I'm trying to turn to the left. It's just not happening. Now I'm trying to turn to the right. Notice that everything is, is kind of working correctly, sort of, in that when I push the stick to the right, now yaw is negative. We can see the p-term goes negative and the gyro goes negative. Everything is, is doing fundamentally what it should be doing, but the timing is all messed up. The timing is all messed up. So for example, here the stick is centered, but the gyro is still positive. And it means that the copter is still yawing to the left, even though I've centered the stick. This period right here, gyro, our, our RC command shows that the stick is centered, gyro is positive, and the copter is still yawing to the left. Notice that the p-term is trying to fight this, but it's just not succeeding. And we may see that again. Here, the stick is centered, but the gyro indicates, I'll move it over here a little bit. Oh, I can't get it out of the sun. You can't see it. Let me see if I can change that color real quick. Hold on. That's not any better. How about green? There we go, now you can see it. If there's one thing I could call out to you in this example, it would be that look at this lag between what the RC command is doing and what the gyro is showing the copter is doing. That lag is indicative of an undertuned copter. And there's always going to be some amount of lag there because the copter is a physical system. It can't respond instantaneously to inputs, but we want to see that lag be pretty small. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this analysis. The answer was low P gain due to a difference in P term P gain scaling between different versions of beta flight and operator error. I forgot that that had changed. And this is what a copter looks like when the P term is so low that it just can't get the job done. Uh, there you go. I hope this was educational. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.